Hello there and welcome to Let's Talk. Today we're going to be talking about what I think is a very interesting and unusual um, topic. It is being an apostle in the marketplace. One of my guests here today, I had him on another chat and he introduced himself as an apostle in the marketplace. And that got me thinking, and I said, okay, look, you're going to come back some other time and you're going to explain um, what you mean by being an apostle in the marketplace. So today here I have David, the apostle himself. <laughs> <laughs> yes. He's also a business consultant. Yes. And um, so you're welcome here today. Thank you so much. It's good to be and here. And then I have gifts. Oh, no. Gift is a telecommunication engineer. And I was told just before we started now that he has experience subsea, under the sea. <laughs> <laughs> so you lay the cables under the uh, sea. More like manage the cables. You manage, so you don't go under the sea no, yourself. No. <laughs> but we tell people that go under what they need to what do. What they need to do. Okay. So Gift, you're welcome. Thank you very much, ma'am. Um, one thing I noticed about both of our guests today, if you take a good look at them, is that both of them are actually glowing. <laughs> and I'll, <give> you, <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you the secret <clears throat> of their glow today. So David got married in November. November, yes. And Gift got married in December. Yes, ma'am. So you can see. <laughs> <laughs> so the last time we were on the show... Uh, yeah, no, 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 no. You are not like this at all. Like this. The last time, you know, your face was very <laughs> strong. So we give a big shout out to our wives. Our yeah, wives to your wives. Know. They've yeah. done... A, in fact, you, just before we job. started now, I was telling you that you have transformed. <laughs> <laughs> so a big shout out to the wives for the transformation. Sure, yeah. <laughs> there we go. There we go. <laughs> okay, so once again, you're welcome. Thank, Thank you so very much. much. And I'll just yeah. take a, um, a good look at this topic, being apostles in the marketplace. When you said it the other day, it got me thinking. Because my usual identification of an apostle is um, somebody who is out there building churches. Like you look at Apostle Paul in the church. They're doing a great work. Today we have great apostles. They're building churches. Some of them are building, doing the work from scratch. Yes. And when I look at their lives, they are focused and they have a commission from God to go out there, share the gospel of Jesus Christ, talk about salvation, healing, deliverance, and so on and so forth. In fact, one thing I took note of about Paul was that he was so focused that um, in, I think, somewhere in the book of Acts, it says that within two years of him being in Asia, everybody in Asia got to hear about the Lord Jesus Christ. No air travel, no... A lot of his work was done on either going by road or max on the ship. So why do you call yourself an apostle in the marketplace? It's a so, big title, apostle. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a big title, but I think it's more about having an understanding of who your identity is or your personal, um, your 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 personal mandate okay. as a Christian. Personal mandate yes. as a Christian. As a Christian, it's not just about going to church on Sundays. It's yeah. about the lifestyle. So if you have an understanding that Christianity is actually about the lifestyle, it means that everything you do as a child of God or as a believer should mm -hmm. be centered around Christ. So you shouldn't put everything that you do in life around the church, but you should make God the center and make him the anchor. It means that mm -hmm. in your business, in your dealings with people, your communication, it should all speak the glory of God. It should basically... Your life should be an exemplary life. Okay. You know, the Bible, the word Christianity, you know, they say it's the, it's the followers of Christ. That yeah. That's how it came about. And so if you are in business, it means that when people see you, they should see something different about mm -hmm. the way you transact your business. Yeah. Okay. So little things around keeping to time, integrity, yeah. all those things okay. are very important. 
Thank you for that, at least that up summary. Yes. Gift, do you think that the marketplace, so when we say marketplace, so we define that, we're talking about our offices. Yes. We're talking about if you're in the school, if you're in the office, um, you're a nurse working in the hospital. Yes. That for you is like your marketplace. So yes. we're not talking about in the market. Yes, no. <laughs> So, Gif, do you think that the marketplace is like a valid mission field for a believer? <laughs> uh, yes, I think it is. Uh, if, we, if we go back to when Jesus speaks about us being the lights yes, and okay. the souls, um, I personally feel there's no way we can actually influence the world mm -hmm. without doing that in our own space. There's no way you can actually compartmentalize yourself as a Christian to okay. say, okay, I'm a Christian when I go to church. Mm -hmm. and so when I'm going to work, I drop mm -hmm. this part of me that is a Christian. And when I go to work, I just, mm -hmm. you know, give the work attitude or whatever. Mm -hmm. You are a Christian at your core. Mm -hmm. So wherever you are, it's supposed to show. Be a Christian. So you're supposed to be a Christian in everything you do. Mm -hmm. That we spend more time at work. Excellent. You yeah. know, we spend That's more true. time at work than even at home. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to spend more time at work, which means you interact with many more people at work. Mm -hmm. And you would get those opportunities where people will be down where people will come to meet you and just talk to you about certain yeah. things. So there are a lot of opportunities yeah. to actually speak the gospel. So is it a, a good missionary field or a mission field? Valid it's a perfect mission. one. It's, it's perfect, perfect yeah. because yeah. You, you will see people in their yes. true color. Yes. I mean, you meet them in different ways. People yeah. would, you might be at work when somebody gets a call where you lost yeah. someone. Yeah. You would have the opportunity to talk to the person. You'll be at work where someone is down. My manager just spoke to me anyhow. And you, that opportunity is always there. So it's a valid mission field. Okay. Our approach sometimes should be that we should, how would I call it now? We are multivocational. Mm. If you look in the Bible, you would see that Paul, for example, he was a tent maker. Yeah. And he was Same also way. preaching the gospel. Yes. You see, Peter was a fisherman. Luke was a doctor. So in a way, they still held on to their profession. Yes. And they were still um, also really doing right. the work of Christ. Most of our work is now in the church. Yeah. Certainly. 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 How, many, what, how, many, how many hours do you spend, do you in, spend church? in church? <laughs> and I think the greater role in the church is for the pastor. So the pastor is there, he's teaching people, mm -hmm. he's feeding them. Yes. And then Speaking when you are fed, what do you do? Well, you you go, out go out there yes. and you go and um, do what needs to be done. Now, this calling, is it for every Christian? Is it for everybody? Because you identified yourself as an apostle in the marketplace, yes. as if you are the only apostle. We are many. Is, is it just that <laughs> you are many? But is it for every Christian? I believe it should be for every Christian because the mandate where it says go into the world and make disciples of all nations, well, it shouldn't be, it wasn't given to a specific group of people. It wasn't given to pastors. It was given to everyone that believes in the Son of God, everyone that believes in Jesus and believes in the gospel. That person has that mandate to do that. And it's interesting that you mentioned um, the workplace because the workplace is a super fantastic place to you know, carry out that sort of evangelism. Because if you look at the life of Paul, Paul's ministry and his mandate was not necessarily to go and speak to the Jews. He was sent more to the Romans, people mm -hmm. that were not of that Jewish tribe. And he was able to communicate with them because they could relate with him, right? So if, for example, you are in the workplace, maybe you are a senior executive in the financial services space, you can easily, you know, be talking financial services and then, you know, somebody at that level has a problem and then you can actually minister to that person. Why? Because you already have that sort of um, audience with him. Influence. And influence. And then he, if he looks at you and he sees the caliber of individual that you are and you also stand for Christ, yeah. it's more impactful that way. Um, if a man that is maybe, you know, well-to-do and is very wealthy, a poor man goes to meet him and tells him, you know, about Christ, the, there's a tendency that, you know, so in his subconscious, he mm. would want to, like, this man doesn't really, is he supposed to be telling oh, he, he can yeah. even feel that yes. it's poor people that look for Christ. Exactly. Because they are poor exactly. talking about yes. Christ. So he may have that mentality. But you see, when 
you know, it's somebody of influence. Another good example that of somebody of influence in the Bible and someone that's successful is Joseph of, of Arimathea. Yeah. When Jesus Christ was on the cross, yeah. none of the Jews could bring him down. Nobody. Nobody could none bring him. Them. But the Bible yeah. says that there was a certain man, Joseph of Arimathea, a rich man. He was the one that went to meet Pilate and he spoke to him and they see oh, Pilate ordered that he be brought Jesus Christ, the body of Christ be brought down. If that man was not there, mm. I'm sorry, I don't know what would have happened today. It would have never been told, you know, the story. But he said that his personal tomb was where, where they now, you know, used to um, bury. bury Jesus Christ. It now goes to show that the reason why we as Christians need to also, you know, at, be in certain spheres in the society, be it politics, governance, science, technology, mm-hmm. is so that when decisions that matter, are being taken. Yeah. There's somebody raising the the, 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 the voice mm-hmm. for the church and there's someone raising the voice for humanity and what Christ stands for in that conversation. Okay. So why do you think um gift? Why do you think today we don't have too many people who have this mindset um of being an apostle in the marketplace? Why do you think that's the case? Okay. And what can be done? There's something you said you don't drop your um, Christianity at the gate, go into your office, and okay. then when you're going back out, well, a lot of people do that. Yeah. Mm. Because I've also found in offices, I'll give you an example. There was a guy who walked up to another guy and said, look, let's do this deal. And he said, I can't do it, I'm a Christian. And this other guy said, no, I'm a Christian, Christian too. <laughs> <laughs> so, and I'm born again. There's nothing wrong in it, what's the big deal? There are some people who actually drop their Christianity their conscience. and conscience and everything at yes. the gate. And sometimes you find that even some of our bosses these days, mm. it's becoming a pattern for bosses and supervisors to talk to their staff anywhere, anyhow, not to care about what their staff are going through. And I can tell you, some of these bosses are tongue-talking, born-again Christians. Christians. Yeah. So why is it like that first? And what word do we have for um, these set of people. Okay, um, I will go back to what David talked about. I think it goes back to understanding yeah. why do you have a job? So why are yeah. you working? Mm-hmm. Um, somewhere in the book of Colossians, the Bible says whatever you do, you should do it as unto God. Can you say that so, again? In the book of Colossians, the Bible says whatever you do, <laughs> do. do it like you're doing it unto okay. God. It even says be it word or deed. Exactly. Do so if, if you have a job, right you are supposed to be representing god in that job yeah, right god. like yeah. you're doing unto god yeah true. i mean so when you show up you're supposed to know that i represent jesus here i'm showing up to represent uh, the kingdom of heaven here so you have you have um the regular job you're going to do but you know that you're not just doing it for yourself you're doing it to represent god so if you're going to represent god then you should also know that whatever god's kingdom I mean, stands for, yeah. you should stand for it there. Mm-hmm. So it becomes easy that way. If you have that understanding that I represent Christ here and everything I do, Christ must show forth here, mm-hmm. then you would behave yourself in quotes mm-hmm. and actually be a true representative of Christ there. Yeah. So why people don't um, represent God well, mm-hmm. I think um, perhaps people want to just align. Um, I was reading a book recently and the author of the book said something about human beings having the desire to just blend when they're in particular <laughs> places. And he yeah. gave an example of a particular research that was done where they put different people in the room and there were lines and they had to compare the length of the lines. And um, the other people influenced one person who knew the right thing, that the lines were not okay. the same length. But yeah. he knew what he was saying. But because, because he didn't want to everybody. sound strange, mm. he didn't want to sound strange. He just, mm. okay, these five people are actually smart guys. Maybe they are right. And he blended in. So I think a lot of us want to just blend, blend in. in. Mm-hmm. So we get there, we see that, oh, people lie a lot here, for example. You have to lie to do this. And then, eh, it's not that bad. And then people blend. Nobody wants to really stand out. Stand out. So if we represent Christ, then we should be ready to be different. Mm-hmm. And I, another thing I want to highlight is there are some people that the pastor cannot reach. Sure. A lot. Yes. There are a lot of a lot. people... Even if all you're doing is inviting that person to church, sure. there are some people that the pastor cannot invite to church. Even in the time of Jesus, 
It was also evident. It got to a point where Jesus has done his ministry up to a particular point. And he sent out the 12. Oh yeah, yes, you to go and reach stuff. this, 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 this. And even when he left after 33 years, what did he do? He's handed over the mandate to us. And yes. I think like you said, and like um, David also said, we all have that mandate. Mm -hmm. So when we ask the question that, is it every Christian that should be an apostle yeah. in the market? It should be every Christian. It, it is every Christian. Yeah. Regardless of whichever market you find yourself. Yes. Doctors, they have this very amazing ability to reach out to people. Yes. When people come at their True. lowest and they're sick, yes. a doctor can, it's not as if a doctor is going to be preaching to everybody. Yeah. But a doctor will say, oh, you've done this, you've done this, you've done this. Why don't you also pray? And that person is so open. You could even see a patient that will say, please, sir. Oh, you're a Christian. Can you pray please for pray for me? True. So I think we, we've all had different examples. I'll give one other example. There was a lady in my office and she went to the ladies' room and she heard somebody crying behind closed doors. So she knocked the door and said, please come out. Then the lady now that was behind closed doors said, look, I'm owing a debt I cannot pay. I want to kill myself. That's what she said. She said she even came from another floor and came to that floor so that she could, nobody would know her. She wants to cry herself out and that she's just thinking the next thing she wants to kill herself. Mm. A pastor would not have been able to reach her yeah. there. This, my friend, eventually, how much was this money? It was like 150,000. Wow. This, my friend, went round that day to all the orgasms she knew. She raised the 150,000 and gave to her. Oh. And being an apostle, you can reach out to mm. people wherever. Okay. Ah. I mean, that, that, that just shows, you know, when we cluster ourselves in church and mm. we all have this mindset that the influence is just in church, it's, church, yes. it's, it's a big problem. We need to go out and actually carry those, those are streams of light. Yes. Take it out there and shine the light. Yes. That's how people would get to know more about God. And that's how we represent Christ better. Yes. The influence is not just when we are together. We're in the church, no. It's actually when we're we out there. And you know, he gave the example of um, Joseph of Arimathea. Yeah. What if he didn't have that influence to speak to yeah. Pilate? And the interesting thing is that Joseph was also a disciple. Yeah, the Bible, was a disciple. He was a yeah. disciple, but yeah. because he wasn't among the, the 12, 12. Right. he was not known because yeah. he was, it seems like he wasn't a full time. I'm sure he was probably maybe like a business person too, so that's why he was. There will be lots of people in, in, um, in the professional space, in the market space, that are doing a great job, but then yes. they don't have a title. They don't have Nobody a title. Nobody knows them. And it doesn't decade. matter it doesn't matter that they don't have a title. Because they are playing their role. Yeah, they and what is role. most important to God is that um, they are doing the work. Yes. And usually when God sees somebody doing the work, yes. he will bring more people across your path. Sure, sure. He will know that I can depend on this person to do the work. What else, what other reason do you think God has called us to be apostles in the marketplace? I think for for one reason you know there are certain decisions that are made outside of the four walls of a okay. church that can impact on the church okay. so there's a reason why you are placed in that in in the center of it all in your professional so field. that you can also speak. you can be a voice yes if you look at the life of esther for example she was she she she, she was there and because she needed to pass a message across to the king, and she was the only one within that circle, that it had to go, go through her. Mm -hmm. yeah. The whole lineage would have been wiped out if she didn't speak up for, for, for the Jews at that time. So I think, you know, God puts people in certain places and key positions so that when they see the evil that is about to be propagated, they can do something about they can it. Do something about and it may be just be something small, maybe a bill that you know that if this thing starts, if it kicks off, it may start off very subtle, but then the longer term, the longer run, the effect on the long run can have a far more devastating effect. So when you look at it as a, even as a as a country, we realize that um, Christians as a group, we kind of let the we are more focused in our church activities and building the church. Rather than going into politics, yeah, we left yeah. politics, politics alone, and now we are seeing the implications of that. I think now we see that a lot of churches are being more vocal deliberate. about and deliberate about people going out to vote, about people joining politics, getting mm -hmm. involved yeah. in the policy of the land. I think it's very important because 
Um, that is one sector. You know, there are so many other sectors that we've not been so much involved mm. in, but we're, you know, gradually getting there. Recently, especially when I was preparing for this. You know, but where they talked about these mountains of influence. Mm. And when you look at the seven mountains of influence, even though I don't agree with all the, a lot of the things around mm -hmm. them, but I think I cannot disagree with the fact that there are areas yes. of yes. influence. This issue of business mm -hmm. and finance, mm -hmm. in a way, it tends to give voice yeah. mm -hmm. to all the other mountains that you're talking about. You're talking about um, uh, family, you're talking about the arts, you're talking about media, yeah. you're Politics. talking about even religion. Yeah. Let's call it Christianity. Christianity when yes. you're looking at the church, you find that you even need money of course. to build mm. the church. When you have missionaries out there, you need money, money. Yes. to fund the gospel. And even when Jesus was on the earth, he had um, treasurers that yes. were supporting his move. Yes. So I think one of that area to be an apostle in the marketplace is actually to go out there and make that money. Yes, very true. <laughs> <laughs> and actually to be to be a voice. Yeah. You talked about uh, finance and media. Yeah. I think one of the one of the major things now is media. Look at social media. Social Such media. a big voice. Arts and entertainment. <sighs> and Those areas people that have that the money, voice they have the money. Yes. Yeah. Wow. So I imagine a Christian who um, God has helped and he has gotten to like the peak of his career where if he speaks now he has the opportunity to speak to maybe thousands of people being and in that listen. space yeah, when listen. you say something people will listen and I, I look at different areas of entertainment today so I would like to give the example of Mount Zion and these two series they have just done you would say they are heavily Christian they are heavily they focus heavily on the message of Christ. But every time those, um, those, those videos come up, it's like a, a YouTube series. Yeah. It goes straight to number one trending. And people are watching it. And people are, because I, I, sometimes I go back and I read the comments. It's like, wow, this has been a blessing to me. Mm -hmm. I've learned so mm -hmm. much. How will you do without money? Because Mount yeah. Zion before, people had put them in a box that yeah. most of yeah. their movies Traditional are this. Media. But somehow they have come out and they're trending, trending everywhere. So yeah. one of the things that apostles, us mm -hmm. apostles, mm -hmm. <laughs> also mm -hmm. need to take note of. And I think every Christian needs to have a, a change yeah, in change. mindset. Yes. That church or my Christianity is not just about church. Yeah. In fact, if you want to work in the church, your your work will be limited because Absolutely most of the limited. most of the people in the church are either born again or they're on their way to becoming born again. Mm -hmm. The fact that they're in church. So the real harvest, where the Bible says the harvest is ripe, the laborers are few, the real harvest out there. is yes, out there the on the mission field. And what um, David, what word would you say to Christians today who because we are talking about money? They make all this money, but they're using yes, the money for themselves. for themselves. What word would you have for Christians like that? Either it's for themselves in their bank account, or I'm rushing, I buy today, I buy a Louis Vuitton bag, mm. tomorrow I'm buying this bag, and I'm just spending the money on my yeah. vanity. Mm. So there's a, there's a place where in the Bible where it says that where a man's treasure is, that's where his that's heart will true. be. I think in building up your treasures, always remember that we're in a transition. Mm. We're world, in a transition. I mean. We're in a transition. Right? This can you say this, that again we're and in, louder? We're in a transition. <laughs> this world is not our home. Yes, sir. Right? If you believe that there is a heaven and you're on your way, your way there, mm. then I think you would realize that everything that you have today and every position that God has given you mm. is so that you can use it to propagate his gospel. So the blessings that the wealth that you have should be used to support the kingdom of God and the work that is going on on the mission field because there are people out there yeah. who are actually, you know, going through a lot of stuff, you know, on the mission field. So try as much as possible to, you know, set a good portion of what you earn aside, to so aside to support. to support the work of God because they are the ones that are, you know, doing a lot of the hard work. We're also doing a great job, you know, being apostles on the marketplace, but don't lose 
um, sight of that goal, that everything you have. Imagine the amount of sacrifice. That, for me, I felt when I read that place in the Bible, in the book of Matthew 27, 57, when it talks about Joseph of Arimathea, mm. it says that it was his own personal tomb he gave out yeah. to Christ. And Imagine, that tomb, yeah. yeah, he had built bought it, it he had built it, you know, just for himself, but he gave it out. Thank you. I will take that as the last word from you. Any last word? Um, boils back down to having the right perspective. If you know from the beginning, the reason why I'm here, the reason mm -hmm. why I'm on this job mm -hmm. is to represent God. Mm -hmm. Whatever level you get to, you would always want to ensure that the kingdom work goes on. Yeah. I mean, if, if you remember that, we are, like you said, it's a transition period. We are on earth for a particular season. Mm -hmm. So if in this season I want to ensure that I leave my mark, how do you leave your mark? You have to do a lot of good works, first of all. You have to help a lot of people show love. Mm -hmm. And also you have to push God's agenda mm -hmm. above every other thing. Mm -hmm. I know you might have... And above your personal, above your personal, personal, personal agenda. agenda. You have to push God's agenda. And God's agenda, like you said, has to be financed. So the reason why God is taking us high mm -hmm. is so that we have the resources. Mm -hmm. So when you now have the resources and you hold back to it and you're you not pushing are, the agenda, you're limiting yourself. to push any agenda, yeah. basically you need the media, you need finance. Those two things are very powerful right now. So if you have the voice, I mean, you've grown to be maybe the CEO or a senior manager somewhere, that means you have the voice. You can go somewhere and people will listen to you. And you also have the finances. I mean, push God's agenda. So thank you very, very much. I think this has thank been you for having us. very insightful. It's been an eye opener. Thank you for having and us. And I think some of our takeaways is that we really don't have the choice. It's not you choosing that. I will go to church on a Sunday and that's it. Mm. Everybody has a calling. Sure. Everybody. I don't think there's anybody that is a Christian that God doesn't have a plan for your life. And I think some of us maybe have to go back to God. I'm really asking, even while I'm in the marketplace, Lord, what is it you want mm -hmm. me to do? To do yeah. yes. I'm available. Use me. Let me be your voice. And like you said, we should actually see ourselves as a channel. Look at the person I said, wanted to kill herself for 150000 Something that some people take as lunch. Some of yes. the higher executives. Yeah. Yes. You bring four or five people together. That's the it's lunch that. That's, for yes, that so, day. That's it. Some people would spend a thousand dollars. That's how much. That's about five hundred thousand right naira to a day or on a, a bag, yeah. Yeah. and that could save so many people's lives. Yeah. So before we make that next expensive um, purchase, let's ask ourselves the question: What would God actually have? I'm a channel. What would God actually have me do with this? And we've also said, let's be the light. Let's be the salt. Let's be out there a picture. Yeah. of what uh, let people see us and see christ so thank you very much once again thank you so, thank you so now we're talking apostles <laughs> apostle baby and apostle gift thank you very much thank for you being so much here. for having us so um for our viewers out there i'm sure we've learned a lot today i want us to like change our mindset change our thoughts and let help Every Christian out there, you need to understand the fact that God has actually called every single one of us for his purpose. And we just need to make sure we align with the plan that God has for our lives. Even if you're not a Christian, begin to um, seek God's face on how you can understand the salvation that our Lord Jesus Christ brings. God bless you. Thank you for watching. Let's talk today. Have a blessed day. See you again next time.